right here for the practicalprepper.com. I finished up the main valve assembly for the swales and I uh, built it on a backboard and uh, basically it's in the ground on concrete posts so this will make a fairly this will make a permanent installation for everything down here. I also took some old uh, fencing wood that I had and made a, a little shade for it so I can keep the sun off most of the stuff during the hottest part of the day. Uh, go over this thing real quick. Um, I'm putting it online this morning. I did all the flush out and the testing yesterday. Most of these uh, main three quarter inch lines are, are left pretty long. And I'm just going to kind of play with the whole system and at some point I'll shorten these up and I may put them underground. I'm not real sure what I'm going to do. I've got two that go to the main swale and two that go uphill. So this is just about to come online. The timer's counting down right now. So valve one should open. And there it went. So valve one is now open. So that's going to that's going to run the largest part of the main swale, which is on that end down there. Then there's two shorter sections of swale behind me. That's zone two. And the tow swale, the larger section of the tow swale, which is up and down that direction, is zone three. And zone four takes the smaller section of the tow swale. It also picks up four trees and a few other plants I've got up by the driveway. So zone one is now running. It came online and uh, it's going to run for an hour and then it'll shut off. Two will come on for an hour. So it's seven, eight, nine, ten in the morning is what I have right now. I'm running that at the present. I'm going to run it Mondays and Fridays and watch and see what the effect is out there. The uh, emitters are uh, one gallon per hour, 18 inch on center, uh, half inch lines are the main emitters on the swales. I have some individual emitters on some of the trees, especially up the driveway in their one hour emitters on quarter inch tubing off the three quarter inch, off a, yeah, three quarter inch main line. So all my main lines are three quarter inch. Um, I did a couple things different than I had planned. This particular valve right here is... Uh, basically my back bow preventer and my inline check valve. Um, you can't quite see it, but right behind me and actually right there, you might be able to see it, that's the wellhead. And we're down on the front edge of the, the front three acres. And behind me is a standpipe, uh, dry pipe. So I can use that dry riser during the winter. What I've done is I've hooked up a high pressure hose that comes in on the back side of this. And uh, during the irrigation season, I will just leave that check valve open. And uh, I use the high pressure valve because I don't want, I want to reduce the risk of any accidental blowouts that, uh, that might occur. So it comes in on this line. This is a double, this is a double check valve. And actually, it's a dual check valve, excuse me. There's a couple terminologies. A double check isn't quite a dual check. A dual check is basically two preventers. So I'm assured that I'm not going to accidentally get irrigation water backflowed into my well. Uh, what it does is it runs up through a um, pressure regulator, which uh, will handle up to 120 pounds. And it reduces it to 30. So everything on this side, which is in plastic, is 30 pounds. Uh, runs down through an 80 micron filter right here, which I can vent. If I shut down the system, which I can do here or here, um, I can unscrew this take out the inside filter and clean it out and uh, put it back in service. I went with a uh, four valve manifold. This just seemed to be the best and slickest option. Uh, each valve is a Galco valve and it's all run by a Galco timer. This is a DC4 and in the top the power source is one 9 volt battery and I'm told that will last an entire season. So I put a fresh one in at the beginning and at the end of the season when everything gets shut down I'll take it out to prevent any corrosion. Now, um, all the wiring is, is kind of back to here, and this is pretty much all the wiring you need to do. There are some other features the DC4 will do that I'm not using. I don't, didn't see any point to it. Um, and what will happen, I'm going to give you a, a little hint. These are very straightforward to do. The manifold's easy to build. Everything that I buy irrigation-wide comes out of dripworks.com. And uh, great catalog and lots of really good stuff. Um, they also have these. These are kind of pricey, but when you're protecting your water source, you know, spend the $150, $160 that these are. 
Um, my initial thoughts, uh, I'm really happy with how this whole thing goes together. Um, this is the first four, four zone manifold that I built in quite a while. Um, the last one I had was back in California. This is the first one here in Nevada. And uh, they list kind of all the Galcon valves. As long as you're using a Galcon valve with a Galcon timer, everything is sweet. So I have one little tip that I'm going to show you. And uh, this is something we've always done in electrical work, which is really my background. Um, and it's most of my is commercial work. But in, in, in a lot of instances, what they will send you for these wire nuts, and these are just conventional wire nuts, they'll send you these little blue. I kind of started calling them little blue bastards. Um, the idea of a wire nut is that the, the spring that's inside, the smallest end of the spring, which is up in this end, will actually go around the wire and actually tighten around the physical wire. What these appeared to be doing was to, it spun them together and then it left, it has a coat like Vaseline or something around it, petroleum something to seal out moisture. So these are supposed to be for moisture. Well, wow, those are, these are just a pain in the butt and I don't trust them. Um, I do trust my small, my little orange wire nuts, which I have used forever uh, in the industry. And so what I suggest using as a product, uh, this is Scotch Coat, uh, 3M makes it. This is actually illegal to use in California because um, it might be harmful to you or other living things. So, uh, but I think all but two or three states you can get this anywhere you want. Um, so if you have a friend that's out of state, just have them order it for you and send it to you. Um, this is really good and, and one of the things that we use it for is if we get scars and cuffs on the outside of a wire, and I mean right down to where you can see a little piece of the bare wire in it, we'll actually use this along with some rubber tape and some 3M tape on top and this will actually seal it from any water penetration and create a new electrical insulation layer. So uh, this is really good and it's got a little brush in it and all you really need to do is to turn these things down so that they're they're kind of like a little cup and you take the brush and you just hit the brush and you all you want to do is you just want to get a little bit in there until you until it looks like the cup's full and then just let it dry. And that is as waterproof as it gets. And this is really simple. You know you have a solid connection on the wire, and you, now you know it's sealed with the Scotch coat. So my suggestion, use the Scotch coat. Um, what else can I tell you? So far, I'm really happy with the whole thing. We flushed it yesterday, and I think every emitter worked. Um, we flushed a couple lines, and we checked, manually checked a bunch of plants, and uh, appears to be working good. In fact, what we may do is walk over there and just give you a little bit of video of uh, some of the irrigation. So uh, let's head on over. So this is zone one. So right here is the spillway. Uh, the two stakes you see are, that's the level sill. Spillway's on the other side, so this is where the water will ride in. This still needs a little bit of work, but you know, everything here is a work in progress. So uh, zone one, just to show you. This is a three-quarter inch main line. This particular valve serves if I need an emergency shutoff, and I just need to close this thing off while I work or repair it. So I'll kind of show you some of the emitters at work. There's one. It's doing real well. Some of the plants that I have are really small. This is a lead plant and there's a emitter buried right underneath it. So uh, you can kind of, as you go along, you can kind of see the wet spots. So this is a black locust. And uh, it's got an emitter buried right at the base of it. And you can kind of see the other emitters there, just going along. This Home Depot flag is a hole waiting for a plant. We didn't find everything that we needed or get everything, so what we're going to do is, uh, what we're going to do is go to the Washoe Nursery on the 17th. This is one I'm trying, and this should be interesting, but there's an emitter right here. And 
this particular plant, it's kind of hard to see, there we go. Uh, this is a banana yucca. So uh, we're actually trying them. I got two, and I've got them planted here in different parts of the swale. So we'll, we'll see how it works. There you can kind of see the rest of the line. So this line's going to run for an hour. Okay, there's a honey locust. This is one of our uh, seven overstory trees that are in here. We've got uh, honey locust and black locust. Uh, that's a hole waiting for a tree. So these guys might get a little more on the rebound. These are, yeah, my Siberian pea shrubs. They're doing pretty good. Some are a little small with the black locust. These actually look pretty healthy. So this is uh, kind of my drip. This is the uh, this is the rolling dip. It's a little bit clean up. I need to put rock right in through here, and then this rolling dip goes right into the swale. So let's go down here and take a quick look on the end. So this is kind of this is kind of the runoff right here. This water isn't really leaking, it's just running back down the emitters, or from the emitters. This guy looks like he's recovering a little bit, Lombardi poplar. He's got an emitter right on him, right here. And let's double check it. Oh, there's the emitter right here. You can see. Yep, she's getting wet. Go around the front side, we can check right here. So this is an apricot. Get out of the light here. There's the emitter. You can see just see it pumping water. So our cover crop is actually starting to come up. And this one we planted this one we planted much later. But all the all the cover crop is definitely starting to come up, and uh, so consequently we have a lot of places here you can just see all the water dripping. Very cool. This is what oh, this is an autumn olive. Yep, autumn olive. And you can see the kind of the cover crops all on the top there. And this isn't from irrigation, this is from uh, several, about three days of thunder showers we had here. The swales definitely held the moisture and uh, gave it right back to the plants. So a lot of our cover crops coming up. So we've got a bunch of these in the back side, there's a berry. That's probably a raspberry. And uh, a lot of fruit trees. This one I cut back, it's a Fuji. A rising Sun Fuji. So we have a lot of apple trees, or a lot of trees. We've uh, pretty much put in plums, apples, apricots, peaches, and uh, we did put in two cherry trees, which we got at the last minute. And uh, I was hoping that they might bloom a little bit, but I think they've got a little transplant shock, so we'll watch them and see how they do. We do have an occasional something dug in, right, dug right there. Didn't dig a hole, just like dug a little bit. And I'm thinking it's possible rabbits here. There's another one right there. Dug in, didn't dig a hole, just dug down a little bit. So, one thing we're doing is getting it planted and then working out our pest options. So, over here is zone two. That is this is main swale, so this is zone two, level spillway, and zone one. So right up the hill there, you see that's the toe swale, that's the larger section, that's zone three. You see right there in the center, that's a level spillway, or excuse me, level sill, but a spillway. And then if you go to the right, that particular section of swale, toe swale, is the zone four. It also picks up those trees. You can just see them right up on the edge of the driveway by the trailer there. So there's uh, there's some trees up there. There's some real nice Russian sage 
that uh, is gorgeous when it blooms, and we've got some emitters on that. So um, that's kind of the layout here. Um, really, this this irrigation out here on top really was not that difficult to do. It uh, took a little time. You just had to lay it out, and stake it, and, and then as you went around and planted your trees, just go ahead and put your trees by an emitter. So not too difficult. So this is our roadway <coughs> with our culvert that we built. And uh, it, you can kind of see, you can really see the cover crop coming up there. It's so cool. On the back side are berries. So we've just got some berries started. So we'll, we'll see how those do. And we got some, I think, peach and apple on the front end of this one. So this particular rock pile I've uh, quarried off this, off our property, and I'm going to actually put it down here and build the end around these culverts. <clears throat> so the culvert pipe will, will have some rock around it to uh, give each side some stability. I'll do the same side on this thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're up and running. Um, bring more when. When I have it, and here's the setup. So here's the well here on the left. Right there's the well head. It's my dry riser and hose. So I kind of got a temporary strap off the back side of that. I had to adjust it a little higher yesterday, but uh, it turned out it turned out pretty well, I think. So and again, and again, uh, you know, anything that's Ag and in the middle of Reno, the high desert at 6,000 feet is an experiment. So we see what works, we see what doesn't work, and we modify it. But as long as we can try to work with nature and not against it as much as possible, it just make our life easier too. <clears throat> so it's all for now. We will check in with you guys later. See ya.